Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to make a cost curve chart uh, and from scratch, and then we'll uh, see if we can graph it. So what we're really thinking about is a production schedule for a firm and a cost schedule. So we'll put in Q for quantity. We'll put in, uh, it's your choice whether you want total cost first, like total cost first, then fixed cost, then variable cost, then we want marginal cost somewhere, and then we want uh, our average total cost. If you want average fixed cost, you can have it there, and then average variable cost. Uh, I well, I guess we can put it over here. Um, I also like to sometimes put the price of the product over here, and then uh, that can give you like marginal revenue. Okay, so actually we can even put a couple of columns here for total revenue and then marginal revenue okay uh, marginal revenue and marginal costs are usually easiest to put right next to each other so just as a matter of preference i guess i'll also put one over here so just got two two right there so whatever your price is let's say that the price of the widget uh is eight uh so we want to basically fill in a bunch of formulas so i'm gonna make these bold here okay so we're gonna put equals and we're going to equals whatever the price is and i want to lock that cell so i'm going to hit f4 on the keyboard or you can put two uh, dollar signs right there and multiply that by whatever the quantity is uh, first quantity let's say it's zero let's go let's let's use it a little more realistic let's say i was going uh, quantities of 50. oops 50. nice thing about excel is once you once it recognizes the pattern you can drag it down you can see it's going all the way to, let's go to 800, okay? Um, now I'm basically building a model here. So the model needs to, I, I need to fill something in here. So uh, you could start with whatever you think the fixed cost should be. So I don't know, let's, let's say that the fixed cost is 100, so we've got machinery cost. When I don't produce anything, my variable cost is always going to be zero. So that means that our total cost is our fixed cost plus variable cost. And then we're not going to have a, let's put a couple of X's there. We're not going to have a zero marginal cost, zero average total cost, zero average fixed cost, zero average variable cost. Uh, we also wouldn't have marginal revenue. We wouldn't have that. Okay. So th those, these like don't exist. So put that right there. Okay. Um, now you, it's kind of your choice. So if I want like a linear cost structure, what I can do is just take this and then make each cost. Uh, let's, let's, let's make them um, 750. So it's it's me adding whatever this was to 750. So drag that all the way down. Um, you can see basically each 50 units is 750. Now now that I think about it though, I'm adding 50 units there. So um, so I don't know. What if what if we did 100 or 120? Let's do 120. Okay, let's do it like that. And all of this is going to be money. So we can tell Excel. Working with money here. Just click that. There we go. Okay, now uh, fixed cost is just going to be the same. So it's just just whatever you put in as that, and then our total cost is this plus this, and we'll just copy this all the way down. Okay, now we got our all that marginal cost. We're going to write a formula for this. You can either use the difference between here and here or the difference between here and here. I'm going to use total cost because that's a little bit more uh, of what people are usually talking about. So it's it's the difference between 50 units, the total cost of 50 units, and the total cost of zero units. But then we have to divide it by the difference between this and this. Okay. In other words, those 50 units, the first 50 units was the additional cost. I put them in parentheses just so Excel doesn't get confused. 
in. Uh, we got that. Okay, and I just copied that formula all the way down. So the marginal cost of the first 50 units is $2.40. Marginal cost of all the rest is 15 cents. That makes sense because the this is a linear cost st structure that I wrote. Okay. Um, now for uh, average total cost, so just write a quick formula for this. It is the total cost divided by the quantity. Okay, and just copy that all the way down. That's going to change, and it so it, it starts a little bit high, and then it goes down. It's its minimum never. It's just it's always declining. We haven't we haven't done it yet. Uh, for our average fixed cost, it's fixed cost divided by quant twenty. Or sorry, 50. Um, that's going to decrease forever. And then you have a choice for average variable cost. You could take this divided by this, or we could take this one and subtract that one away because this plus this has to equal that. So, so we'll go all the way there. And then our total revenue is whatever our price is. Oh, we actually already did this one. So we'll just take this formula here a lot and then our marginal revenue um, when it's perfectly com well let's do it this way let's say it's um, the difference between total rep so it's the difference between 400 and zero and then divided by 50. I actually know the answer is going to be eight because this is a perfectly competitive situation um, and so it just Right there. Okay. Now this one, I can copy that right there. Okay. Now I've got the whole table. Uh, and if I wanted to know how many uh, units I wanted to produce, actually something's wrong here. Oh, I see. My marginal revenue column is wrong. It should always be eight. Okay. So that it's good to, to recognize the error there. Um, and that's because I divided by 50. So the second one is dividing it by 100. So you don't want to do that. That's actually giving you like average revenue. So we'll take the difference there. So just redo the formula. Okay, now I've got everything uh, filled in. And if I wanted to have Excel graph these guys, I certainly could. You, you probably don't want to graph this stuff. You really just are concerned with marginal cost. Average total cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, and then and then marginal revenue. So let's go to insert. And we're gonna insert a table. Some people like the line charts, people like the scatter. I'm gonna use the scatter. I'm gonna use the rounded kind of guy right there. And of course, didn't, uh, let me highlight that first. Actually, I'm going to undo undo those. Okay, so now I want to insert. Let's see what let's see what we got. Okay, let's see if this is realistic. So that top one should be average total cost is, and then marginal cost. So this isn't this isn't a great one. I'll just say like. Example, oops, example cost curves. We're going to change this in a second. And then I want to add one more uh, thing, which I think I can do here. To add series name MR. The X values are going to be. Oops, these, and then the Y values will be this. This can be a straight line, okay? So marginal revenue is always higher than uh, marginal cost and average total cost, so therefore we're always going to produce. So if I want to make something a little more, like so let's say I want to change the price. So everything's going to update. It's going to need, uh, so let's change it to four. Okay, updated everything. 
uh, still making a profit. What if we updated it to, let's look at our marginal cost there. Let's say, let's say it was a dollar. Sell everything for a dollar. Okay, you're going to produce everything. You can make this a little taller if you want, whatever the preference is that you wanted to do. Um, let's let's change this and instead of being linear, uh, let's just fill in some numbers. Okay, so let's say uh, let's take we're going to add that plus 120. Okay, that's fine. And then on this one. We're gonna go plus 120 uh, times 1.5. See what that does. So it really, really increased our cost. Okay, so now our orange line average total cost. And then our, right here, this is our marginal cost. So in this case, marginal cost is always higher than whatever our price is. So you can mess around with the price. Let's change the price to four. And so right there, it's never going to hit marginal cost. Okay, so again, I still have a linear function here. Uh, another way to do this is just to kind of fill in what's going on. So um, Let's take this plus 120. Let's take this plus, what do you do, 120, like 150. This plus uh, 175. This plus two, oops, let's say 220. I'm trying to make it increasingly more expensive. This plus 250. This plus. 3, 320, this plus 500, so on and so forth. And we still see this great. You don't really even need average fixed cost. I'll just delete that. And here's our average total cost. This part I haven't updated yet. So just say this plus 750. This plus 900 plus 1500, this plus 200, this plus 4000, plus 5000, this plus 8, whoops, 8000. Fifteen thousand, fairly tedious, and I don't know, twenty-five thousand. Okay, so it might seem like I'm just making up numbers. What I'm really doing is modeling. Okay, and you can see everything by changing this. It's updating everything else in my table, so you can mess around with whatever uh, you kind of want to do. Uh, change the price. Let's see where are we at with marginal cost here. Let's change the price to five. So that'll show us that we want to produce, if we're perfectly competitive, we want to produce right here to 250 units. So that's way down there, kind of gets out of hand um, later on. But you can see, and if I guess if I wanted to, you'd kind of get rid of the rest of that. Or or maybe, I don't know, let's, let's change it to change it to 80. That would show us we want to be over here. There's our marginal cost. So if you want to change the color, you certainly could. And that's how to model uh, your own cost curves, microeconomics graphs.